Hey, this is Matt for ArtDM 130, and I'm going to go over Practice Assignment 1. So Practice Assignment 1, you can find in the class schedule, in class 2 here. And if you click on this, this is about Audacity file management and basically just getting some sounds into Audacity. And you can see the directions here, and if you scroll down, you can see the grading criteria and there's a clear rubric. Make sure you double check to see that you have all of the points here uh, before you submit your assignment. And this is true for all assignments in this class. So this is just practice here. And we're going to use Audacity. And I just installed the update. In this case, it's version 3.1.3. And I'm going to click on this. And now we're in Audacity. I'm just going to resize my window here. And you should be able to just hit record and start recording. That's this little red button here. Looks like an old tape deck. There's pause, play, stop, rewind, fast forward. And I'm just going to record my voice as a test here. Testing, testing. One, two, three. This is Matt McLean. What do you see? All right, so there's my little poetry in motion here. You can see my waveform. Uh, this means that it did, in fact, record. If you do have a problem recording right out of the gate, it might be a matter of selecting your input source, and I'm going to click on this here. Uh, in this case, I'm using a little Fifine uh, lapel mic, and you can also record just like I'm on my laptop, built-in microphone, or if you're using Zoom, you, you can... I don't know if there's a Zoom device. I don't have one. I'm not sure why it's seeing that, but um, I've actually had problems with Zoom um, playing other programs back through it. You have to go in and change the output. And if you ever do have to do that, that would be done over here. So if you're like at a Zoom conference and you wanted to play back Audacity for people, you'd probably have to select the Zoom device there. I'm going to leave it in built-in output because I'm using screen flow here for screen capture. And then, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, so if you want to have fun, um, there's some generate functions here that come with uh, Audacity right out of the gate. I think the, the tone and noise and maybe the DTMF sounds come with it. I've installed some other ones. These um, are things that you can download from the Audacity website. So for starters, I'm just going to use a, a tone generator. And this can be a really powerful tool because you can pick uh, your frequency in Hertz. And after you've read through the first couple modules about audio in general and frequency, um, you would know that a higher the number is a higher pitch. Um, that's really high. Um, I'm going to do 440. This is the note A that a lot of classical musicians uh, tune to, although that is subjective. There are definitely orchestras that tuned to other pitches. I think San Francisco Symphony is an example of one. Um, or at least it used to with Michael Tilson Thomas uh, as the director. Anyway, uh, I'm going to pick a sine wave. This is the most basic type of sound wave. There's also square, sawtooth, etc. I'm going to hit OK. And watch your ears. Oh, it just recorded over that track. That's OK. I didn't need to hear myself anyway. Um, so I'm going to zoom in. Whoops. I think I said watch your ears there. You can control the volume. This is your friend. This is the, the gain is the same as volume. Plus 0 dB is right in the middle. Um, if you want to boost it, you can go way up here. Be really careful because as I've gone over in some of the lecture material, uh, a 3 decibel boost is equivalent to doubling the power. So it's like going from a 50 watt amplifier to a 100 watt amplifier. Just three little decibels. So boosting it way up here can really blow your ears out. These sine waves are, are they're pretty loud right out of the gate. I'm going to turn this guy down. And then um, there's your sine wave. Uh, another a key command that I use all the time on a Mac, it's command 1 and command 3. And that zooms in on your waveform. So I'm doing command one. I think it's it's either control or um, I think it's control one and three on a PC. Let's see. 
So here you can zoom in, and this is one of the cool things about Audacity is you can actually get in to the DNA of the waveform. Here's a little pencil tool, and so you can actually redraw curves. Woo, good times. So you could literally go in and, and paint a symphony. <laughs> it would be really tricky. It would probably take you a billion years to do it. Um, as I zoom out like that, you probably won't even hear that little glitch that I painted in there. I'm going to go back. This is just the, the cursor icon here. And you can see the little blip right there. Let's see if we can hear it. Oh, yeah, that was a little, sound like a little clip, a little static pop. So anyway, you can get in there and um, it is destructive editing. So that's one of the things that it can be really powerful about Audacity is getting in. You can actually fix problems. So for example, if you had a, a glitch in a track and you wanted to go in and fix it, you can... Um, oops, zoom back out. You can zoom back in on that, put my cursor right on it. You could go in and repaint the curve. You have to be zoomed in far enough to do that. So, oh yeah, you can see why it glitched out. It's all over the place. I'm just going to go whoot, and fix that little thing right there as best I can. Nice and easy. Hopefully, nice and easy. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out. You can hardly even see it. Let's see if you can hear it now. So it's right after 15 and a half seconds. These are seconds, these little markers, and this row above it. This is uh, important for this project because I only want you to submit something that's uh, at most 30 seconds long because I need to get in and listen to everything. Let's listen to that again. You can still kind of hear a little wobble. I can actually see it in the waveform. So I need to go in there and do a better job of painting it to really fix it. Um, but anyway, don't. <laughs> you can spend a lot of time doing that. A lot of times it's better to just, you know, delete your track if there's a problem with it and re-record it or regenerate it in this case. Um, so uh, for this project, you can record your own voice. That'd be awesome. It's a great test to make sure you have a microphone working. Or you can go to freesound.org, uh, freesound.org, and if you set up, it's usually in the upper right-hand corner, you can set up a, an account. And then um, this is the, the sounds page here. And waves lapping. I think I downloaded this one. Here's an 8-bit game one. You can preview them here. And then it, once you're logged in, you, you can click on this, and you can go in and you can download uh, the tracks. One thing that is a word of warning is it has a Creative Commons, the licensing agreement. So a lot of the stuff, the vast majority of it in here is free open source and you can click on this and it'll tell you. Public domain, you don't have to, no copyright, you don't have to do anything here. So that's cool. Um, that's one I might want to steal. I think I did not steal, download. This is here, people put the stuff for us to use. Um, some things are attribution, like you have to give people credit or you can't use them in commercial settings. That's why it's always good to use stuff that you can, that are open source. I kind of steer away from complicated things just because it's hard to keep track for a project. You don't want to go back in and have to deal with the legal stuff later. Uh, then you can see the sample rate, the bit depth, all this information on the file. Um, there's some meta tags down here. So I went in already and downloaded a bunch of cool sounds just for fun. Um, let's get rid of this and let's see what I got. So what I did is I actually downloaded them uh, and then I put them in this folder. And, and I recommend doing this uh, if you're messing around with uh, freesound.org. It keeps your stuff organized. And actually, let's go back to freesound. And if you go to download here, and I'm, if I want to download this again, look at the name of the file. It's super duper long. Um, some of them have these big numbers in front, and that can get really confusing if you're looking for a file. So I'll usually rename them and keep it simple so that I can find it later. Um, and in this case, I've pared down the names. I cut out all the big numbers. Some of these were cool because they actually had the, um, the beats per minute. There are a couple music tracks. I think, I, oh yeah, I got that 8-bit one. That's cool. And then I got some birds and some flapping wings or leaves, a mouse eating a cracker. 
Paddington Station in London, I believe, uh, steam train, and then typing, just some basic typing sounds. So uh, this is really cool. So now you can just, I don't know, which one do we want to start with here? Well, this is kind of how I started. I, I downloaded the 8-bit one just because that was like the first thing there. Drop this in here. Boop. And let's preview it to make sure it works. Click over here. Oh yeah, cool. So then I'm going to go back over here. And then there was this other, I don't know, the Amen break, the second most sampled break uh, after the Funky Drummer break by Clyde Stubblefield. I can't remember who played this one. You'll have to look that one up. But uh, anyway, they edited it and sped it up to 150 beats a minute. So you'll notice this one is 120 beats a minute. This one's 150. So it's going to be out of sync. Let's just listen to it together. This one looks really loud. It looks loud because the waveform is super maxed out here. You can actually resize these by grabbing these handles. This can be really helpful. And you can actually minimize a track if you want to get it out of the way. I'm just going to get them so they're a little more manageable here. And then just because I know this is so loud, I'm going to turn the gain down so it doesn't blow our ears out and let's hit play. Yeah. So it, you can hear it kind of gets off. Another one is this other, this one here is pretty long, 15 seconds. Well, a little more than 15 seconds. And let's say I want to repeat this one. I'm going to go back over to my other tool here. This is true for any kind of audio. You can, if you're doing sound, you don't have to do music. I'm just, I don't know. That was like the first thing that came up. So you can actually um, click on this. If you want to use these little um, copy and paste tools, you can click copy. And then you, I'm going to use my right arrow key and go to the end of the, wild, the uh, waveform here. And you, could, you can see my play marker move to the end of it. And then I'm going to use uh, paste. And I'm going to right arrow over again and paste again. Yeah, cool. So now I have three. And then I'm going to change the tempo because I'm going to, I can actually match um, these two using a cool effect. So I showed you where the generate functions are. Um, again, some of these you'll have to download. They're sort of like little extensions, but they're, they're fun and easy to do. Uh, the directions in Audacity on their website and how to do it. And then all these effects, a lot of these come with it. I've added some more down here at the bottom, um, but there's some really cool ones that come up with the latest version of Audacity. And let's see, I'm going to change the tempo because it gave us the tempos. So I had this first one um, selected and it told us, this is why it tells you, uh, 120 beats a minute. And I already did this once as a test, so it knows what I want to do. Then I'm going to change it to 150 beats a minute and I can hit OK. And it just changed this one. Let's see, I can always undo that. Let's see, these are the undo and redo functions. So I'm going to go back, undo. Oh, I actually changed both of them by accident. So I'm actually, yeah, I don't want to do that. I just want to click on this one track. And then let's do that again. Change tempo, and it remembers my move. Blammo. OK, so now it shortened this one here. And let's see. I think I need to repeat this one. Well, we can do that later. Let's just make sure it syncs up. Yeah, they sync up. That's pretty cool. Um, so now I'm making music. And then again, I'll, if I wanted to copy these over, clipboard over, right arrow, clipboard. And you can do this with key shortcuts too. It's a lot faster. I'm going to do the same thing here with this one. Make it a little longer. Arrow over. There we go. And so I'm on my way to making some a 30 second track. So now these sounds kind of made me think, you know, it's kind of fast. It reminded me of like a train station. So I actually went into um, freesound.org and you can actually type like, I don't know, it sounded kind of like a train station. Type in here and then, come on now. Uh, there are how many? Uh, well, 2,874 sounds. Pretty cool. So I downloaded a couple train station sounds just because I wanted to like superimpose these. So let's see, which one did I do? Um, oh yeah, steam train. So drop that in there. Let's listen to it. Oops. Rewind here. <laughs> So 
So you can solo these out. I want to hear the steam train sound by itself. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, I could speed that up. So I'm going to go over to whoops effects again. So I could just speed it up. I could uh, change the tempo. And I, I should have clarified what change tempo does is it changes the rate um, that you're hearing the track, but it doesn't change the pitch. If you change the speed, it will uh, kind of like an old tape deck so, or like an old record player changing the speed. It'll both speed it up and change the pitch at the same time. So that might be kind of a cool effect. I'm just going to throw it. Yeah, so it's like an old 33 and a, and a half record player. Let's say I want to put it on a 45. So they call the old little singles 45s because it's 45 uh, revolutions per minute around their old record player. So let's do that and see what happens. And yeah, it's faster. Now it's kind of a high pitch sound that might work better with my little chip tune 8 bit sample here. Oh, turn my solo off. Let's give it a listen. Yeah, let's head in the right direction. Let's make it even faster. Just go crazy with it. Um, actually, let's do change tempo. I kind of like that high pitch one. And I'm going to change it. Well, I can use a percent change. I'm going to make it way faster. It's going to be like. Chick -chick -chick -chick. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Boom. And solo it out. Yeah. Uh, and then let's do that repeat function here just for kicks. Copy it. Arrow over. And paste it. Cool. And then um, let's put it in all in the mix here. Yeah, and I might turn that down because it's kind of stepping on other things. So another really important thing to point out is the clipping output function here. There's an input. If your microphone is clipping, uh, you'll see that light up red there. But here it's lighting up red. This is the number one no-no in the land of digital audio. Never want to clip. So you kind of have to isolate which tracks are problematic and use these volume sliders to turn things down. Let's hit play and see what happens. Yeah, so that's, that's better. It's not clipping anymore. And then, I don't know, these sounds kind of got me just on this little thought process here. <laughs> and for some reason, that little chicka 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 sound, it reminded me of like a, mat, a mouse. I was thinking, well, maybe well, there are mice on the platform. Let's put a mouse nibbling on something in there. Mouse eating a cracker. Hmm, interesting. Okay, yeah, a little nibble. And then I'm actually going to get rid of this beginning part. So I can actually just highlight, like swipe a piece of audio. I'm going to swipe the beginning here. And uh, I'm actually just going to delete it. And that moves everything forward so it's all synced up at the beginning. All right, so that might work in there. I can just tell this is kind of too high of a frequency, so I'm going to use another fun tool just while I'm having fun. I go over to like the pitch one, just because you can see that over there, and I'm going to turn turn the pitch way down. So this isn't going to change the speed or the rate of the tempo. It's just going to make it sound like a an evil mouse, a big rat. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Process that, and let's listen. Oh yeah, big scary rat. Nice, cool. Let's turn that down and listen to it all in the mix. Whoops, I think I had everything highlighted when I did that. That is a problem. Zoop, undo that. Let's make sure, turn the solo off. Oh yeah, that was a problem. So let's just make sure I highlighted that one track, and then let's go into the, see, mistakes do happen. And I just, I did undo, I was using the, sheet, the key shortcut. Let me just actually show you where that is again. That was the undo and redo. So double click on this again, make sure I only have one thing selected. And then I'm going to change the pitch way down. Okay, so that just changed that one track. And let's listen. <laughs> Yeah, cool. And then, I don't know, that reminded me of what else is on the train station. Well, it's maybe some birds. So I think there were some, I don't know, I had some flapping sounds. Uh, 
this one is really quiet so you can just turn it up in here um, here's another cool tool if you double click on this whoops there is something we'll get into in depth later but it's called normalization and this will basically turn your track up so it can compete with these louder tracks and I don't think this is the default I think negative 1 dB is like the default it's, so it doesn't clip um, and then you can see it, it turned it up here. That basically just said the highest peak here uh, is going to be all, just a decibel from clipping the output. So I got a little more volume out of it without having to change this. And I have some information in later modules about it does this alter the audio and some people, there's some back and forth, some interesting takes on it. But for now, it's just an easier way to make it compete in the mix. All right, so I got some leaves in there turning into this big clutter thing here. Kind of cool mishmash of sounds. Since there's so many in here, I'm actually going to zipper these guys up. And then, I don't know, let's just throw a couple more. Like I mentioned, Paddington Station. Let's turn this one down. So now we have an actual train station. And then was there maybe one more sound in there? I don't know. Oh, typing. Just because typing kind of sounds like train sounds. So I'm going to have these kind of cool overlapping sounds. I get rid of the beginning of that one and then again I mentioned that your project can only be 30 seconds so I'm actually gonna get rid of the end of this one and this one I'm just swiping them away Boop. so now I might if I want to fill this space in here um, I might need to do some more repeating of tracks sometimes it's kind of cool to not have everything playing at the same time and actually just for kicks this is kind of where the art of just having fun with audio comes in I'm gonna turn the music off and I'm just gonna mute those and then I'm gonna use another you can actually repeat these if you want it looks like I need to do this maybe one two three four five six times you can go into effect and there's a faster way to do this would I say Oop, not 47 let's try six times so that repeated it close to the end and then this one I could repeat that one once effect and let's just do one here. Boop. <laughs> oh, my, sorry about my sound effects here. Let's see, what was... These are the music ones that are muted. Okay, and then these here are the other freaky ones. All right, so let's go back to the beginning and listen to the track. Oh, I just noticed the newer version of Audacity allows you to pinch on it. If you have a, a mouse trackpad, you might be able to do that. I'm actually, instead of doing my, my command one and two to zoom in and out, I'm just pinching on the waveform. So that's why I resize that and rewind. Let's give it a listen. Okay, there's my weird little sound design thing. Um, so yeah, hours of fun with that. Um, you can do other things like you can reverse them. So I want to turn this typing up. That was kind of cool. Okay, now it's time to export the project. <clears throat> so since I have these two tracks muted, these here, they won't be exported when I go to um, export the, the mix. If I wanted those in, I would turn the mutes off. So whatever you have soloed out, or muted that should be read when you export the audio and if you want to solo like two maybe this track way down here and this track way up here if you hold down shift you can solo that one and solo that one um, if you just try to solo it it'll solo that one and then I think it'll switch to that one so anyway let's make sure let's turn my music -y thing off mute and mute and then for now I let's say I'm done with my project so one of the other incredibly cool things with the new version of Audacity is the way it saves files. So I, need, I should have done this earlier, um, but what we want to do is save <clears throat> this. On, I'm going to do it on my desktop here. And let's go. We can skip that. Okay. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And create a new folder. Always do this because for your project submissions, you're going to be 
uh, adding several things. Usually it's going to be the project file along with your export or exports. In the case of this one, there's going to be one export of audio and then another export of audio as an extra credit in a different format. So I'm going to create this new folder and I'm going to call it my last name and practice assignment one. And I'm actually going to copy this because I'm going to well, <laughs> let's see if it let me do that. Oh yeah. So I'm, I'm going to call it um, practice assignment one. So I'm going to hit save and then just go over on the desktop to make sure that it's there. Let's see, do we see it? So click on this and indeed it has my, it looks like, oh, two things in there. So it has the AUP3, that's the new format. And then it has this temporary file. And the temporary file will go away when I close Audacity. So I'm going to save it and quit it. And then you'll see that temporary file go away. And back in the old days, Audacity used to have all of the audio files in a folder that went along with your parent folder. And things would get lost and people would move one and not the other. And the magical strings that connected them would get confused. So now everything is wrapped up in the project including the downloaded sounds that I added to the project. So I don't need to dump those into my project file, not with Audacity. So if I open this up again, you'll see that it's all back in there, including that move I made at the end with the mutes. So now I'm going to export this as a WAV file. This is required. So these are the uh, file formats that come with it. MP3, um, that's a, a compressed type of audio that is smaller, um, it's a lossy format, so things will be degraded somewhat. Uh, wave files are uh, what they call um, PCM files, and they are the exact copy of all of the original wave files. They don't do any math on them to downsize it. This is the highest quality. And then uh, OGG is Og Vorbis. I think Spotify uses this as an, an open source uh, format, and that's why Spotify uses it. They don't have to pay licensing fees. Waves, the WAV files are um, Windows protocols, and I don't know all the legal details behind it, but um, that is my guess, is that that's the reason why Spotify uses the, uh, the OGG. And you can change, well, let's go to export WAV file. You can change the um, bit depth here. So 16-bit um, is the old school uh, CD quality, 24-bit, if you're doing like a master at the highest quality, 32-bit uh, is PCM is probably the highest quality. I have yet to see a need for 32-bit. A lot of things won't read that. Um, re some DAWs won't read it or other systems, whatever you're using your, your project for. So um, Make sure that your name of the, of the uh, export is the same. So McLean practice assignment one, and then I'm going to make sure I put it in the right place. I'm going to put it in to my project folder and it's going to mix our tracks down to a single stereo track. And then these are the meta tags. Uh, wave files are the same as AIF F files. Um, wave files are windows protocols and AIFFs are Apple uh, W for Windows, Microsoft is easy to remember, A, AIFF for Apple. And the only thing that's really different is the way they um, have these meta tags in there. So I can, you know, I'm an artist, right? So put my name in there. I want to title this one, Fun. And then the album name, <laughs> uh, TBD. Because this album probably won't come out. Track number one, of course, is the intro. You know, you don't have to put this stuff in here. Genre. Hmm. It, t <laughs> TBD. <laughs> so anyway, you can say hi. Whatever comments you want. This stuff will come up in there. Uh, and I, you, I don't know. It's not FL Studio. I don't know why that comes in there as a default. So anyway, um, you don't have to do this for this assignment. I just did that for kicks. And then I'm going to hit save. And let's double check in my project folder. Yes, sure enough, here's my export wave. And I can do an information on it. It'll tell me how long it is, 30 seconds. That's what the maximum of what you can submit. 44.1 is the sample rate. 
The bit depth is 24-bit. I chose that. This stuff is covered in my modules in the first several weeks. We'll take a deeper dive into it. Um, and then for what is required, I'm going <clears> to <throat> quit this project. This is what you need to submit. So um, if you do want to do the extra credit, I'm going to show you one last cool trick. And then I actually show you how to upload it into uh, Canvas for the class. So I opened a new Audacity document. And I'll use Audacity all the time, even these days, to switch file formats. Um, sometimes you might be work doing a audio at 44.1, um, the sample rate, because you're working with music. Or, and then you might be working, a or you might get dropped into a film project that is at 48 kilohertz. That's the standard for video these days. So you can use this to change the sample rate. So I'm going to drop this original track in here. And then I'm going to change the project rate here to 48. This is actually a two-step process, though. So uh, I did it there, but I also need to double-click on this and go to Track and then Resample. And I need to resample this to 48 kilohertz, 48,000 hertz. You can pick all these different ones. Pretty cool. And then I'm going to hit OK. So that resampled it. And now uh, for the final step of the extra credit, you need to export this in a, an M4A format. So I'm going to take this and go Export. And you'll see you don't see M4A. Uh, it doesn't come with um, Audacity. What you have to do is get the FFmpeg, FFmpeg library. It is a library extension. There's a link out to it on the Audacity site, but it is um, required if you want to either drop like a video in here and be able to edit the audio for, that it strips out of it, or all these other cool audio formats that I'm going to show you right here. So now, because I've already installed that, you can see here file type. Uh, I can do an AIFF, it's another PCM type of file, or um, what did I say I wanted? Oh, an AAC file. And if, it, if you need the FFmpeg library, it'll tell you where it came from. So I'm going to do M4A. And then for the quality, you can do this at a super high quality. And uh, AAC files are, stands for Advanced Audio Codec. The reason why this is in parentheses is M4A files, like an MP4, uses AAC, the Advanced Audio Co Codec, is the most modern, up-to-date um, type of file compression. It's super complicated um, math that they run on the audio to downsize the files but retain the audio quality. It's better than an MP3. And most, I think, audio engineers would probably be hard-pressed to tell the difference between um, 320 and the original PCM, the WAV file. So for fun, what I want you to do is turn it all the way down. So just to see if um, a poor quality M4A quality, if your ears can even tell the difference between the original and that. And it sort of depends on what you drop into your project. If you have a lot of high frequency sounds or it's really quiet, you might actually be able to hear it better. Um, but let's do that. And I'm going to do this. I don't need to change the name of this because the uh, suffix M4A here is um, is going to already give it a different name in the in my old project folder here. So I'm going to go save, and we can leave all that stuff in there. Hit OK, and then I'm going to quit this. I don't need to save this. Uh, nope. So now I have three items in my folder, and I'm going to do an information on a Mac. It's Command I. It's probably Control I on a PC. Um, oh, here's my comment. Hi. So my sample rate on this one is 48 uh, kilohertz. And this is what I'm going to be doing to grade the extra credit. I'm going to go in and look at your files. Uh, see the duration is the same. If you didn't change the um, sample rate, I think your duration uh, might be different. Is that right? Yeah. No. Oh, if you, yeah, if you didn't change the project, you need to do both. You've got to change the project sample rate and the, uh, on the go to track and resample. 
but it might change the length of it if you don't do it right. So anyway, I want to make sure that the duration and your sample rate uh, are, look like this here. And then um, if you do want to give it a try, you can always open Audacity again. I do this all the time. Uh, for A, you know, A being comparing your two file formats. And this is what's really cool about Audacity too, is you can just drag and drop different audio file formats into a project. And these are actually different sample rates, but you can hear them back. Pretty cool. Um, and then, so you can solo one out, listen to it. And then solo the other one out, listen to this one. And then ask yourself, are these different? Uh, again, it really depends on the quality of and the type of sounds that you have in here. But this this last step is really just for fun, just to, for you at home to compare those. So I'm actually going to delete that. Nope, nobody, nope. Um, and then this is the final step. So now I've done the extra credit, I've resampled it, and I double checked to make sure that I have my AUP3 project file, my M4A, and my wave. And let's see, what am I going to do? Oh, I need to zip this. And the reason why is you can't upload folders into Canvas. So, um, let's see. To do that, you hit Control on a Mac, and you go to, and it's probably Command uh, on a PC. Um, I'm going to go to Compress. This is actually just going to turn it into a zip file. I will take a, an, a RAR file, .rar, I know some Windows users use those. Um, but this is now a file rather than a folder. It should be a little smaller. So when you go to Upload, um, back in the assignment, um, in the student view, you'll see a Submit button. If I click on this, you should see oh, Start Assignment. I think you have to go to Start Assignment now. And then here's the Submit. So you can upload the file from here. And again, it has to be a file, not a folder. I only want one thing uploaded. Um, and that one thing is your z compressed zip file. Um, that's it. And then when I open it up, there should be at least two things in there. Three if you did the extra credit. And uh, that's it. Um, one little last note is this, this type of compression is basically just downsizing the file, the folder tape type. Um, we're going to talk about audio compression or dynamic compression uh, several modules down the road. But in this case, when I say compress, I'm talking about making a big thing smaller. Okay, over and out. I will see you on the internet soon and have fun. Again, you don't have to do music. You can, you can do any weird sounds you want to as long as it is at most 30 seconds. And make sure it doesn't clip. Um, I'll send you a little note in my comments if it does. All right. Happy editing.